Hand, who is the master of living in a car. I <laughs> hope, you, hope you're not too uh, taken aback Thank by you. that, but it's true. Thank you. Uh, you've been, uh, you live and travel, well you don't live in it, you travel extensively in a Prius. Correct. Um, tell us a little bit about some of your travels. Okay. Uh, in 2010 was my first uh, long trip in the Prius, about six months, and I traveled across country, um, primarily visiting national parks and a few family members. And since then, I've been on the road about three to four months a year. Uh, again, I love uh, being in nature, so I spend a lot of time in, on uh, national forest land like this and BLM land and um, attending the RTRs in Quartzsite. Right. So what we're doing to do today is, uh, back in 2008, I got a lot of letters from people saying, I've, I've just lost my job six months ago, I'm going to lose my apartment, my house, I'm on the streets, please help me. And uh, since I started making videos, one of my goals has been to make an essentials video. And we're living in a Prius, you know all about living with just the essentials. Exactly. So I've asked Sue Ann to help me, and we're going to look at... So you're forced to move into your car. It's far preferable if you have a minivan or anything bigger than a car, but let's assume all you have, all the money you have is a car and you're going to be living in a car. We want to show you what to buy and what not to buy, because too many times people go out and spend what little money they have on things that don't help. And then they end up with the things they don't need, but, and not the things they do need. So we think that's really important. Hopefully when we're done, you'll have a pretty good idea of what to do to move into your car if you're forced to, or if you want to. If you want to. Sue Ann did it because you want to. Exactly. Uh, and so you had to be a minimalist. Right. Were you a minimalist in your, before? Uh, no, I was getting ready to retire and uh, I knew that that uh, appealed to me. Uh, we had a little teardrop and I really loved camping out in the teardrop and of course that's very minimalist and uh, somehow it dawned on me that I could do basically the same thing in the Prius. Right and um, and very very well. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will be this video will apply to both of you uh, those who are just being forced into it and just have no choice but move into your car and those of you who want to live a minimal life of travel or however you, your age maybe you're young and you just don't want to follow the normal path. So just the idea is we want to help you to do by the right things and not the wrong things. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. So Sue Ann, let's start with, uh, we're going to go through the rooms of the house mm -hmm. and say you're going to duplicate your every room in your house in your car mm -hmm. for the minimum amount of money. And then we'll also maybe throw things in that if you have a little more money, what you can do with them. So let's start with the bedroom. Sue okay. Ann, how do you live in, uh, what do you do for a bedroom and a bed specifically in a car? Okay, well, let's uh, go over here. Okay. And um, this is uh, not the Thermarest that I use, but very similar. Uh, I have an REI brand. It is a three and a half inches thick, 25 inches wide and 72 inches long and it fits in a, a space in my car that uh, happens to lay flat in the Prius. Uh, I use um, cot sheets uh, as my bedding, and then for the warmth, I stick with either uh, one of, th or all three different kinds of materials. Nylon, you can see it there this in this the uh, camo, camo. Uh, fleece, which I, uh, is a polyester, and then wool. And the reason that's important is because in a car, when you sleep, you exhale a lot of uh, humidity or uh, water, basically. And if you're using cotton, when that gets damp, it doesn't keep you warm. But all of these three materials will keep you warm. Very, very important. And let's just explain that uh, these, these self-inflating pads are not just your standard air mattress they actually have insulation inside of them. Right. Uh, they were designed for backpackers who lay on the ground, the very cold ground, and so they have insulation inside of them. And they're self-inflating. There's a valve here, and you probably can't hear that, but it's letting out the air now. And the more I... And so, uh, and you probably have gotten used to this, uh, you can let air in and out as you need it. Right. You, 
For me, I don't like it fully inflated. So what I do is I lay down on it, open the valve until it's just right, right. and then I close the valve. And, and that's my preference. These are a little more expensive than, than probably the, uh, you might want to spend, and depends on your budget. These are ideal if you can afford it, and they make them thicker. They make them like I have, mine is, I sleep on one, a Thermarest Mondo King, and it's like four inches thick. It's right. amazing. Right. It's amazing. Best bed I've ever slept on, 150 bucks. Uh, but if you can't afford that, you can also just go to Walmart and, uh, and so like this is 32, find a 60 inch mattress, say four inches, two, three, four inches thick, cut it in half, and then lay them on top of each other, mm -hmm. and there's a great mattress. Mm -hmm. That's Ooh. actually what I started out with, is just a foam mattress. Right, and that won't be much money at all. No. Uh, a, a Walmart topper, uh, wide enough, cut in half, and then you've got a great mattress if you don't have this, the money for this. This is a better choice, but you may not be able to afford it. But you can all, did you probably got some of these or most of these at everything here at a thrift store? I would say probably 80% of the things that you're gonna see today came from a thrift store or a garage sale. So if you know there's a foreclosure or a, uh, an end of the road for you, start looking now. Right. G garage sales, thrift stores, and look for these things. Um, non, don't get cotton. You don't want cotton in your in your vehicle right. if you can avoid it. Even a cotton mix, you don't want. Right now, I would say in the summer, cotton is more comfortable. Excellent. But do you have room for just? But maybe you do. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, what I do is, um, if I have blankets that I'm not using because it's warm, and I have a cotton sheet, is I will put the warm blankets underneath my mattress and just sleep with the cotton sheet. And if it gets really warm, I'll spray the cotton sheet with water. Which, oh, great idea. Yeah. Uh, that makes cools you right off. Cools moisture. you right off, unless you're really in a humid, humid uh, area. Which like, you did that too. One summer you went to the southeast, so you know all about that. Yes, a couple summers. Yeah. Okay, so the bedroom is, and uh, you're, we can't tell you how to make your bed fit in your car. That, that all the cars so are so different. But uh, I do have a video of a car dweller and Prius dwellers, and you're just going to have to figure it out somehow. Um, Next, we're going to look at your living room. This is your living room, believe it or not. <laughs> and your living room is outside. Right. Uh, so these are, on a good weather, you want to live out of the car and not in the car. Is that, would you agree? I would say that's exactly right. I don't say I live in my car. I say I live out of my car because this is my living room here. Right. And having a Prius, if the weather's bad, you're probably thinking about going to where the weather's good. I certainly can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just uh, it has wheels. It 50 and 50 miles to the gallon. Right. Uh, but hopefully most people have a, a fairly eco economical car with 20, 30 miles to the gallon or more, and so maybe they can beat the weather. But your really your best bet is to be outside, uh, if at all possible, because the car is so small. Right. You're probably only in the car when the weather's bad. When the weather's bad, or if I'm online, right. I like to be in the car. Uh, just because it's easier to see. Exactly. Right. Okay, and so what do you need to have your uh, living room outside? Okay, well, I think because we're in a car, we need a chair that is comfortable and it also uh, stores small. So the umbrella chairs are great. I like this chair because it's more like a uh, director's chair, but it also folds really small. Oops. If it does, there you go. So, That's small. <laughs> so that is really small, really small for a director's chair. And the same would be true for each table that you have. This is like an umbrella table, and it uh, stores in this bag. And you also, uh, when we get, we'll get to your kitchen, but you will cook on this. That is a multifunctional piece, and that's another key to living out of a vehicle, is to have pieces that have more than one function. Right. So I've used that as a table for cooking, for just holding stuff. It's been a chair, and it's been an ottoman. Right. So it, it does lots of different things. So it takes up a little space. Well, let's, why don't you fold it up and just show, show people that okay. it doesn't, you know, it, it's as minimal space. Oops, and I think no. you can get them for like 10 bucks even. Um, I haven't seen this particular one lately, but REI 
uh, has a has one that I got recently for about twenty. Okay. But you get so, a lot of bang for your buck. Yes. Here. Absolutely. Since you're going to live out of your car, you've got to be comfortable outside the car. So that's how it folds up. Really small. Really small. Yeah. And then it just fits in the bag. Right. Which I won't do right now, but. Right. And then it's, it is. And of course, in a car, you have to have absolute minimum amount of stuff and and space taken, and this does it. Now we've showed these because these are just so handy. You think they're kind of essential. Right. So uh, just a standard folding shovel uh -huh. and a hatchet. Right. That's all they are. Yep. And I use the hatchet as a hammer. Right. And if you ever build a fire, mm -hmm. uh, and do kindling. Kindling. Mm -hmm. Lots of things um, you can do with with a hatchet hammer. Right. Right. So. And not much, you can probably get these, well this is eight, nine dollars at a Walmart, and this is probably not much more. Not, no. Or, not and keep your eye on thrift stores now while you're thinking ahead. Mm-hmm. Or go and, to Harbor Freight or, or someplace like yes, that. Yes, a Harbor Freight would be a great choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next, so we've got a bedroom and a living room, now we need a kitchen. How do we do the kitchen? Okay, well, let me talk about the stove. This is a butane stove, and these are the canisters that it uses. And I like this because it's extremely stable. This is the little case that it fits into. And then this goes in it, just like that. And um, it's virtually impossible to tip over. Um, I will say, that these canisters, if you see them and you have this kind of stove, go ahead and buy a few because they're not available as, let's say, as much as a propane uh, fuel would be. Can you just show them putting him one in? Oh, sure. Because uh, uh, it, that's it's remarkable how easy, a lot of people right. really love these just because they're so easy and compact. Right. So uh, this is the butane bottle. Just came out. Just went in. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and can you light it? You got sure. Bro you got a butane in there? Sure. Oops. It has to be seated correctly. So let me move this. So this comes down to engage it. If it's, oops, it has to be turned off. So it has sa safety fi features. And then this particular one has a, what's called a piezo lighter and it just lights. And I don't know if you can see that. I'm sure they can't see that at home. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's lighting. It's hot. <laughs> and it simmers well, if I remember right. It uh, it cooks pretty hot like propane. It tends to cook Yeah, hot. yeah. So, yeah, it's they're super easy. You can get these anywhere. They're like 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, they again, they, they fold down into this case so it's very small. It will pop right, I guess we just throw it in there and show yep. people. And, and that's it, it's gone. Um, now, I'm not a fan, and so I'm going to present the other side. Uh, the bottles are eight ounces instead of six ounces, and they're usually as nearly as much or more than a green bottle of propane, and they're half the amount. Um, this will not work below freezing, so you can't use it for heat, or you could use it for heat, but not below freezing. And they can be really hard to find and expensive when you do find them. But so those are the disadvantages, but I will still say half the people I know use these mm -hmm. because of their many, many disadvantages. So it's just something for you to decide. We won't tell you what to do. And as, as far as utensils go, um, pretty straightforward. Uh, just a, a small pan and a saucepan. Both of these are thrift store buy, buys. Then a knife, fork and spoon, a sharp knife. And then I use the gloves like hot pads as well as like regular gloves if I want to go collect firewood or something. Again, a multi-purpose item. Very good, yeah. Okay. And so you probably have pots and pans you're just going to take with right. you. Right. These are uh, particularly useful because they're small and very good, but whatever you have at home will do. Uh, you don't have to go out and buy something new just for for this life. That's the key for a lot of you that you don't have any extra money. Don't go out and buy something if you already have it at home and it's perfectly usable. So you've got to have uh, water and you're just using a plain old water bottle. Right, just uh, got this at the store um, uh, when it was uh, you know sealed and everything and then when I want more water you can uh, just have it refilled at one of those machines for 25 cents or 30 cents whatever it is. So you don't have to keep buying these for 
I don't know what they charge about a dollar now mm -hmm. for these. Yeah, that's but it's dollar. paying for the bottle basically. Right. And then for cleaning, basically what I what I do is when there's food left on something that I want to keep, is I make sure all the food uh, particles are off. Then once all the food particles are off, I use um, distilled white vinegar to spray it. We'll let it sit just a little bit and then wipe it dry with a paper towel and that's to do the disinfecting. That's as simple as it gets. Uh, it's what I've been doing for eight years now, uh -huh. just vinegar. Mm -hmm. That's and what I've done from the beginning too. Yeah. And it works, it works really well. I've never, never, I've never been sick or had any kind of gastrointestinal problem uh, at, of any kind for many cause while I was living in my van. Mm -hmm. That's not true. I got I had an allergy once and I was out puking all day, but it was just the allergy, not yeah. the, had nothing to do with my dishes. So, um, so here's how we cook, how we clean, and here's your cabinet. How do you do that? Right. So because uh, I'm in a car, there's not room, uh, at least and not enough room for me for a cooler. So I made sure that I choose foods that are um, shelf stable, basically. And I just, these are just a, a, some examples. So, um, this is oatmeal and cranberries. And this is a shelf stable tomato and basil penne meal. And then salmon, canned salmon, uh, tuna packet is another good one. Uh, more uh, cereal with raisins in it, canned uh, veggies. So I don't have any here with me right now, but also those little cups of uh, fruit or applesauce. They also make them for um, olives, black olives, and uh, salsa. Right. All of those uh, work really well. Uh, we might throw a plug in for the forum. Uh, we have several threads on the forum mm -hmm. of just about shelf-stable foods, no refrigeration foods for the van dweller, the car dweller. Um, now, some people will want to go ahead and get a cooler, and that's fine. Uh, you're just tied into trips into town, right. dumping the water. Uh, a bag of ice is a buck and a half, two bucks minimum, and you're going to go through two or three of them a, a week, I would right. say, is a minimum. So you're looking at five, ten bucks a week to get refrigeration, and only you can decide if that's worth it to you. I did. I lived in a van for uh, my first four years. Was I had a uh, cooler, and uh, it was worth it to me. But it was a big pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> and then the water is a pain in the butt, and the food swimming around in the water is a pain in the butt. <laughs> and so you can go without it. Just be aware there is ways, and there are other kinds of foods you can choose. And there's there's many foods that uh, we typically put in our refrigerators that can be in a cool place in your car and you don't have to worry about it go going bad. Eggs is an example, uh, mayonnaise, um, fruit, veggies, that kind of stuff. What I do is uh, if it's warm, uh, too warm out, and I think they might get kind of iffy, I will take a wash rag, I'll get back in frame here, uh, like this, drench it in water, and then spread it over that food so basically, it's cooled by evap evaporation. And then I just have to keep going back and spraying it. And it keeps it plenty cool. Very good, yeah. That's an ancient method of yeah, cooling food. It is. It is, yeah. Okay. okay, so here we're gonna look at kind of your entertainment system and your organization system. There you go. So tell us all about that. Okay, um, you wanna hold I'll that I'll up hold for me? I'll hold this up for you. Okay, this um, is a back of the seat organizer and I have it uh, be on uh, my driver's seat and my lounging areas is the passenger seat behind the driver's seat. So this is accessible to, uh, accessible to me all the time. And um, I have little things that are meaningful on here, um, gifts from friends and family and whatnot, but I'll focus on the things that are essential. To me, um, hand sanitizer is important. Uh, Let's take that out and okay. show them, just so they know. We're just okay. talking about standard hand just, sanitizer. Yeah, just standard hand san sanitizer. I uh, have pencils and pens that are important. I have some safety things in here that are important to me. This is a really loud whistle. World's loudest. It is very loud. I won't even attempt to, <laughs> to blow it. As is this canister of, 
of, what do they call this, the air horn? So I don't have the other piece out, but it's an air horn. Basically as a way to signal. And uh, three burst is the, the, the sign of needing help. So if I am in a position and I'm in the car and need help, I can use either of those devices. Then I also keep, happen to keep bear spray with me. Which can be used for people, Which if it had can to be. Used, to. It would be used for people if it had to be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, and I just keep things like, uh, you know, scissors, a flashlight. Notice how small everything is. So nothing is like full size like you'd have in a house. Um, you know, something for my lips, something if I get cut. Um, if I want to make music, I have a little harmonica in there, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and no, I don't play, I just make pretty sounds. <laughs> um, so, you know, this is, oh, these things are invaluable. These little clips, uh, you know, my curtain won't stay in place, so I'll clip it with this. Or um, I, I cl actually clip a garbage bag with it. So um, definitely uh, an essential as far as I'm concerned. Right. Okay? Yep. So that just goes on your back of your seat. Uh, these are a little hard to find now. They used to be really common, but they're kind of becoming hard to find. Mm -hmm. You'll just, and you got this at the thrift store. I did get that yeah. at the thrift store. Oh, the water bottle too. I carry, right. typically carry that around with me. Right. And I think light is one of the most essential things you can have. So tell folks what you do for light in your Prius. Okay. Um, I, uh, what I've done is I've taken the overhead light which is just a, like a standard car's overhead light and got an LED, low voltage LED light to replace it. And then between the light and the cover, before I put it up, I put red cellophane uh, between it. That way, if somebody walks by the car and I don't want to be noticed, it's much more difficult to see red light as opposed to the white light. Right. And I think these are two items that you may want to consider pretty important. I think that this is a Lucy light you can get on Amazon. Uh, and I'm seeing them in more more retail stores. Uh, a solar panel and uh, inside are, does this, power, this got uh, juice in it? Where is the, this is an older one. Where is the button on this one? There, it came on. Well, you can't really see because it's light, but uh, this, and this will run it most of the night, won't it? You, this, you put this out in the, during the day, it'll probably run most of the night. And it's, Lucy lights are really good. Uh, it's also, oh, there's, there it is up on high. And uh, off and flashing.